If your website visitors often ask the same questions, creating a frequently asked questions bot or FAQ bot is a great idea. It will save you a lot of time and money and will help your visitors get basic information quickly. Head over to the chatbot section. It's available through the robot head icon on the left in your Tidio panel. Once you're inside, you will see the templates list. In there, you can use the add from scratch button in the top right. This will let you build your own FAQ bot. Every bot is made up of building blocks we call nodes. Every bot starts with a special kind of node, a trigger. The trigger determines when the bot is going to be activated for a visitor. A bot can have several different triggers if necessary, but in this example, let's just stick to one. You need to decide when the bot should pop up for your visitors. You can see the available triggers at the bottom. The most commonly used triggers include first visit on site, if you want the bot to appear for every single new visitor who arrives, visitor returns to the site, if you want the bot to appear for returning visitors only, and visitor clicks on chat icon, if you want the bot to appear when a visitor actually opens the chat. In this example, let's choose visitor clicks on chat icon. That way, the bot will be triggered for anyone who opens up the chat window. Next, it's time to add some action nodes. Action nodes let the bot carry out specific tasks, like sending a message, asking a question, or giving the visitor a choice of some kind. Since you're building an FAQ bot, you want the visitor to see a list of options to choose from. The decision action will be ideal for that. There are three kinds of decision actions. Decision quick replies, decision buttons, and decision card messages. They all let the visitor choose from a number of options, but in slightly different ways. The quick replies version allows you to show a simple list of options, and it allows up to 11 options in the list. It is the most common choice usually. The buttons version only allows up to three options, but it looks different, and you might like it more for that reason. It also allows the options to stay visible in the chat window, even after the visitor has clicked on an option. The card messages version is the most complex. It allows up to 10 cards to be shown in the chat window, and the visitor can scroll through all of them horizontally. Each card includes an image, title, description, link, and a list of up to three choices on top of that. For this example, let's go with the buttons version. Once you add the bot's first action, it will automatically connect with the trigger. On the right, you can see the decision action's detailed settings. This action consists of two main elements, the message, which appears first, and the list of buttons, which appears below the message. In this decision action, you can add up to three buttons. First, type in the message. This will be the first message your FAQ bot is going to show to your visitors. Next, add the first option you want to show in your list. That will be the first button in your FAQ bot. You now have a choice. Make this button a regular action button or an URL button. The action button will allow you to create a response in your bot and connect this response to the button. The URL option makes the button a hyperlink to any address you specify, but then it cannot be connected to any further actions in the bot. Let's go with action here. Next, add another button and name it as well. Now your FAQ bot welcomes your visitors and gives them two topics to choose from. Now you just need to create a response to each of these topics. But before we continue, you might have noticed the transfer to operator message at the bottom. This message will be shown to your visitors if they decide to write something on your chat instead of selecting one of your FAQ bot's options. Feel free to change this global message or disable it for this particular decision. Close the decision settings and see more available actions. If you want the bot to simply send a message to your visitor, use the send a chat message action Click on it, drag it over to the workspace, and drop it where appropriate. Click on the new action and write the actual message. This will be the bot's response if the visitor clicks on one of the buttons. Now you just need to connect this response with the button itself. To do that, move your mouse over to the decision action and click on one of the dots that appear. Drag a connection towards the send a chat message action and select the right button. And that's it. Now, if the visitor clicks on the first button, 
they will get this response from your bot. To do the same for the second button, you can repeat the process or copy the existing send a chat message action and customize it. Once you've done that, just connect the second button with this new response and you're done. Of course, there are many other actions you can place in your bot, not just simple message responses. Your FAQ bot can offer more options to choose from or even ask the visitor a question to collect more information. An FAQ bot can be as simple or as complex as you need it to be. I'd like to show you two more techniques that can be really useful in bots like this. Restarting the bot automatically and disabling text input. Let's say your visitor has selected one of the options and received the response they needed. The bot normally ends there and nothing happens. But now the visitor wants to go back and select another topic. To make this easy for them, you can make the bot go back to the start automatically. To do that, you just need to connect the last actions with an earlier step in the bot, like the initial decision action. This would make the bot start over immediately, which can be awkward. So let's add a pause before that happens. Disconnect this loop by clicking the X on the connection. From the actions list, add the delay action and place it at the end of the bot. Now, connect each final response with this delay action. Click on it and specify the amount of time. Five seconds sounds good. Now connect the delay action back to the start of the bot, the decision action. This way, whenever a visitor ends the FAQ bot flow, the bot will wait five seconds and then it will start over again. The second and, for now, last technique I want to show you is the ability to disable text input from your visitors. That basically means a visitor using your bot will not be able to write any message in the chat window unless they are prompted to do so by the ask a question action. This is especially helpful if you do not want to receive chat messages from visitors who are already using your FAQ bot. To achieve this, place the disable text input action into your bot's flow. Usually it is used at the beginning of a bot, right after the initial trigger. That way, writing a message on chat becomes impossible immediately when the bot starts. Of course, you can place the disable text input action anywhere in the bot's flow, wherever you feel is best. If you want to allow the visitor to write messages once again, you can place the enable text input action into your bot. Please note, if you use this technique in any bot, it can only work as long as the bot has not ended. If a visitor reaches the end of your bot's flow, then naturally the disable text input action will no longer work and the visitor will be able to write on your chat once again as usual. You can also use a pre-made FAQ bot template to get started and customize it to suit your needs. To add an FAQ bot template instead of building one from scratch, head over to the chatbot section on the left. That's the robot head icon. You will be taken to the templates list right away. Go to the Solve Problems tab and find a bot that will be suitable for your business. The recommended templates are listed based on the types of industry you've chosen during your account registration. Once you choose a template, click on the blue Use Template button to see more details, and click again on the blue button to enter the editing panel. You can now see what we've recommended as a starting point. You can adjust the text inside the key nodes, their quantity, and the order of the nodes. If you wish to know more about customizing an FAQ bot, see the first part of this video where we explain how to create one from scratch or see our video about editing bots in general. We hope you find this video helpful. Don't forget to check out our website for more resources in the Help Center. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video.